So glad to have you join us. Good morning, family. Good morning, each and everyone joining us. You are all welcome. Happy weekend to you all. So glad to have you join us today. Please leave a comment. Let me know who is joining us. Oh, Pastor Rich, good morning. Angela, you are welcome. Oh, thank you, Angela. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pastor Rich, I just saw your message as I was coming live. I will, I will go through it after the session and give you feedback. How are you guys doing? How is the weekend going? Who is making plans for this weekend? Oh, in the heart, I am believe that I oh, your mom's birthday wow that's awesome oh my god actually 80 years young <laughs> oh my god 80 years she's so blessed oh extend my my birthday greetings to her tell her pastor says happy birthday to her and pastor says this will be the best year she has seen so far. She will have so many reasons to celebrate this year. So many reasons to be happy this year. So many reasons to jubilate this year. This will be her best year this, this far. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Wonder how it is like living at 80. She's blessed. Tiffany, thank you for joining us, Tiffany. You're welcome. You're welcome, Tiffany. Oh, thank you, Pastor Rich. Mary, you're welcome. How are you doing? Oh. What at the age of 80 she still does here? What? Hey. There should be there should be something she knows. No, no, she has a secret. <laughs> There's something that has been made known to her that we don't know. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, today is a celebration day indeed. All your friends got married today. 
Hallelujah. God is in the neighborhood. <laughs> Tiffany, God is in the neighborhood. No, she, 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 she's a supernatural 80 years old. At 80, she does hair. Ha. <laughs> In my thirties, I can't. <laughs> In my thirties, I can't. Oh my God, she's a superhuman. And how many of you are there, Pastor Rich? If it's okay with you, how many children does she have? Hmm. She was raised up as, as, as a hustler. Really a blessing, Angela. Okay. She has two children. Pastor, she has two children. Any grandchildren yet? Now I'm getting personal. <laughs> oh yes, yes, Tiffany. That's 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 awesome. That's awesome. Oh, that's wonderful. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. The grandchildren should be enjoying having to see grandma. They can see play around with grandma. <laughs> grandma can see run around with them. That's awesome. I'm just amazed to hear that. Ha. I'm just amazed. It's not easy to see that. We don't see that every day. We don't see that every day. That's amazing. Oh, Zabayana Bala Rasiana. Hi, I struggle to be here today. <laughs> A part of me was saying just rest, another part was saying go round up this session. Round up this session. No, no, for someone who does say she shouldn't look like it. She, she sure doesn't look like it. Ah. Talk about experience. <laughs> oh, Dickens Jones, you're welcome. Oh, Angela, feel really at home. Feel at home. Feel, make yourself very comfortable, Angela. You are at home. The Kenneth Jones, how are you today? Pastor Rich, I need someone to help me preach today. <laughs> Pastor Rich, this is a day that you are supposed to preach on me. Oh, God is going to help us today. That the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad, Dickens. I've not heard you say that in a while. I've not, I've not. That 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 was your signature move when you your signature statement when you step in. I'm good by the grace of God. I'm doing good. Amen. Okay, okay. Let's 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 do something. Otherwise, we'll chat all throughout this session. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Dickens. Thank you. If you say so, if you say so, I trust that when I open my mouth, he will feel it. Just begin to worship God. Just begin to thank God, family. Just begin to exalt his holy name. Dickens says, this is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad. 
Liana barasiana barusha kaliana rasiana baruza. Lize brunda la rusha kalia rasiana balaruza. Kiba ya na 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 bala rara rasiana balarusha kalia raso brahanda la rasiana. Lize brunda la rusha kaliana rasiana balaruza. Kiba ya na bala rusha kalia raso brahanda la rasiana. Zibayana balarusha kaliana rarasiana barusha kaliana rarasiana. Oh kabala raso brahanda la rosa. Zebayana balarasiana balarusha kaliana rasiana barusha ka. Liana barasiana pasarisha fulimi. Kabarasiana balarusha kaliana rasiana. Amen pasarish amen. Zibara sabrahanda la rusha kaliana rasiana baruza. Lize brunda la rusha kaliana rasanda la rusha ka. Zibara swana bala rusha kaliana zoba rasiana barusha kaliana. Oh kabara na 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 bala rasiana. Lize brunda la rasiana bala rusha kaliana rasobrahanda. Kabayana balarusha kaliana razuana bara sobra handa la ruza. Lize brunda la rusha kaliara si handa bara rasiana. Kabara subra handa la rusha kaliana rasiana. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lize brunda la rusha kaliana rasobra handa la rasiana. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, Jesus. We give you all the honor, Jesus. Liana Barasiana Balarusha Kaliana Rasobrahanda. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. You touching my eyes so I can see. You making me to be like you. You touch my heart so I can love you more. You making me to be like you. You touch my ears so I can hear you better. You making me Lord to be like you. Father, I love you. I do. Jesus, I love you. Spirit, I do. Father, I love you. I do. Jesus, I love you. Spirit, I do. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. You touch my heart so I can love you. You making me to be like you. You touch my ears so I can hear your voice better. You making me to be like you. You touch my eyes so I can see your face, Lord. You making me to be like you. Father, I love you. I do. Jesus, I love you. Spirit, I do. Father, I love you. I do. Jesus, I love you. Spirit, I do. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about my life. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about my life. It's all about you. There is no me without you. No me without you. There is no me. I need you more than yesterday. No, no, no me without you. There is no me without you. No me without you. 
This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. Lord, this is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. In the times of trouble in my life, I call upon your name. I call upon your name, Yahweh. And in the times of pain in my life, I call upon your name, Lord. I call upon your name, Yahweh. When I walk down in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I'll just call upon you. Oh, and in the time of pain in my life, I call upon your name, Jesus. I call upon your name, Yahweh. Jesus, there is no me without you. Yahweh. Yahweh. Jesus, there is no me without you. Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh, Jesus, I am nothing without you. Yahweh. we thank you Lord we thank you we give you all the glory Lord we give you all the honor Liana Bar Sobranda Larusha Kabayana Nanaba Larusha Kaliara Sohanda Lia na baraswana balarusha Father we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus we worship Amen Sissy you're welcome God bless you Thank you family don't everyone just joining us we say thank you for joining us you are all welcome in the mighty name of Jesus Please leave a comment let's welcome you Alina B, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. So glad to have you join us today. Nappy Girl TV, thank you for joining us. You're so welcome. 
Oh, Elder Fire, I see you. Thank you for joining us, Elder Fire. You're welcome. Pastor Rich, please write me down the scripture. Genesis chapter 11 from verse 31 to 32. Genesis chapter 11 from verse 31 to 32. Oh, yeah, okay. This is your break time. That's awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. So glad he guided you here. Mary Weber, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome, Mary Weber. Mary, thank you for joining us. Genesis chapter 11. Someone write that down. Okay, okay, Pastor Rich, thank you. Genesis 11 from 31 to 32. It says, and Terah, Terah was Abraham's father. It says, and Terah took Abraham his son, and Lot the son of, of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abraham, is his son Abraham's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur to, of the Chaldees, to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Hara and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Alina. You are making me shy. <laughs> Alina, you're making me shy. Yah deserves the glory. Yah deserves the glory. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. You just hang around. You know who you know who is being replaced. <laughs> The Bible is telling us about Terah, the father of Abraham. As of this time, he was still considered to be Abraham. And Abraham's, uh, Terah set out with Abraham, with Lot, and with Sarai. They set out to go to Canaan, which was the promised land. And the Bible says that when they got to the land of Haran, Terah settled there. And finally, at the age of 250 years, Terah died in the land of Haran. And when we get to when we get to Genesis 12, verse 1, it tells us that God spoke, God has spoken to. <laughs> Amen, Alina. It says, God has spoken to. It says, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto thy, unto a land that I will show thee. Unto a land that I will show thee. So we see, we finish Genesis 11 with an instruction for, 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 for Terah. And what we experienced was partial obedience. What we experienced in that in that instruction was partial obedience. Terror in, in means that the call, the person who was actually favored to be set apart in this lineage was not even Abraham. Someone, you've got to follow me today. God help me. God help me. God help me. Holy Spirit, fill my mouth. It means that initially the person that they that the favor was well, that that received the oil of favor the original person that received the oil of favor to take to set apart the people of god was not even abraham it was his father terah and terah carried them the bible says terah was supposed to take them to the land of canaan but somewhere along the lines terah settled in haran and finally died in haran haran was not the final destination 
Haram was not his final destination. Miss Mania, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. So God instructed him. God instructed Terah to take the family, to take Abraham and the family to, 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 to Canaan, which was the promised land. And, and Terah took them and he rested. He reached when, when he got to. Oh, Elder Fire, you know where I'm heading to, right? When he got to Haran, he stayed there and finally died there. He never got to see. He never got to see the Canaan land in the first place. He never got to see the destination. He, he set out of the place where they were, got, to, got halfway, and finally died there. Oh, Pastor Rich, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, pro, to stay up the anointing for weekend. I'm, I'm trying to see. <laughs> Said this is good already. Amen, amen, amen. It means I have something to say. When I sat here, I felt like there was nothing to say. It means I have something to say. Kabayana balara sobra handala rushaka. Oh, zabara suana barushaka. What this makes me to understand is that there is. <laughs> I'm laying the foundation and I'm doing some groundwork. There is a possibility that the oil of favor can come upon you and you don't get to your destination. The oil of favor can rest upon you and set you apart, but you don't get to your destination. God told me the oil of favor. There are people that are running with mandates today, running with visions today, but they were not the original visionaries. Someone somewhere messed up and, so, and another person had to take the baton and, and finish the race. The Bible says terror was the one who was set apart. It means that somewhere terror missed on... Terah missed out on, on, on the promises of God. Terah did what we call, it, it was partial obedience. And that's where many of us find ourselves. Because God has gave you an instruction. And you didn't realize that that instruction was supposed to. Oh, we have been seeing in the past days. We have been understanding in the past days that, that every time there is favor, there is an instruction. Every, favor will place a demand on you for obedience. Every time there is favor, there is an instruction. And God began to talk to me this morning and said there is someone that there is something that rubbishes the anointing for favor that has been poured on our head. And it is called disobedience. And there are two categories. There is absolute disobedience and there is partial disobedience. And guess what? Partial disobedience and absolute disobedience, all of them are disobedience. So you've got to know for you to actually get to that destination. The past few days we have been looking at the oil of favor coming upon you so that you can fulfill your purpose. So that you can do that which God created you to do. So that you can get to that destination that God designed for you. But the thing is there is always an instruction that comes with the oil. There is always an instruction that comes with the oil. And God is going to come to you and tell you you are set apart. God is going to tell you, set yourself apart. Preserve yourself for me. Set out, leave everyone and go to the land I will show you. And this is terror. He leaves the land and then he goes halfway. And we see the same thing now happening to Abraham. Abraham, they, they saw the, the favor, the, the favor that came upon Abraham's father. It leaves him because the father of Abraham messed up and he came to a descendant. Almost like we were seeing yesterday where King Saul messed up. Esther, who was a descendant, rose up to, to fulfill the, 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 the promise, to, to fill in, to correct the mistakes of the king. So this is another, another descendant that God is saying, okay, your father was supposed to. Fulfill this purpose for me, but your father failed. So I'm going to transfer the oil that was on your father and transfer it to you. But this is your own instruction. He says, leave your father's house, leave your country, leave your family and go to a land I will show you. And then for some reason, the Bible tells us that because Terah, when, when Terah left, there was, there, there was another of Abraham's brother that was Lot's father. He had died, so Terah had to take Lot along with him. So Abraham said, Terah took along with, with him Sarah, who was Abraham's wife, Abraham, and then Lot, who was the other son's, the, the, the other son, the less son's son, 
who was the grandson. So this is God giving Abraham now a specific instruction. Say, I'm going to use you to fulfill the purpose that your father failed to fulfill. But then there is, this is your own instruction. You've got to leave your country. You've got to leave your father's house. You, you've, you have got to leave your brethren. And, and, and Abraham, the Bible says, let's continue. It says, and, and I will make thee. When you obey this instruction, he says, leave all of this. He's then, then verse 2 says, verse 2 of Genesis 12, he says, and I will make thee, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. They now listen to verse 4, he says, so Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. The Lord did not instruct for Lot to follow him. Abraham, he departed as the Lord had spoken to him. But then Lot followed him. And he wasn't, he, he, God did not permit him to take Lot along. God said, leave your brethren. But Lot went with him. And I believe for sentimental reasons, Abraham could not send away Lot. For sentimental, for sentimental reasons, Abraham could not, he could not send away Lot. And, and, and somewhere along the line, now the word, the, the name Lot means veil. Somewhere along the line, Abraham could not see the path. He couldn't see the path where he couldn't understand the direction. He couldn't understand the instructions of God because there was a veil coming with him. So when God gives you an instruction, there is something that God is all, that God knows that you don't understand. To Abraham, he saw a relative. To Abraham, he saw a, a, a cousin. But, 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 to, but, but, to, but to God, God saw a veil that was, support, that was going to veil his face. That was going to cover his face. So that he doesn't see all the promises. So that he wouldn't be able to possess everything that God had for him. Michelle, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. And, 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 and God, Abraham did not understand why God would tell him to leave everyone. Because God understands better. God sometimes will tell you, leave that your friend. God sometimes will tell you, leave that relationship. And you don't understand why God is placing such a difficult demand on you. Because you love that guy, you love that lady. And you're wondering, why doesn't God understand that I am in love? And God is telling you where I am standing from. I see better than you. My point of view is different from your own point of view. And the Bible says somewhere along the line, they got to a point and, uh, and they had grown to a level where when, when, when Lord's servants started fighting with Abraham's servants, sometimes God is going to bring a setup that will, end, that will enable you to separate from that person that you are not supposed to be with. Sometimes God is going to bring some misunderstandings just so that you can separate for some, from some people. Hey, may God bring such an understanding to you. May God bring such a setup to you today. Everyone that is not supposed to be a part of your destiny, may God bring a setup that will separate them in the name of Jesus. May God bring a setup that will separate them in the name of Jesus. Everyone that will not help you to get to your destiny, everyone that is not adding value to your life, everyone that is draining you, that is taking from you, may God bring a setup. May God bring a setup that will separate them from you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm doing the best I can, Alina. And the Bible says it got to a point and there was strife between the, the, the servants of Abraham and the servants of Lot. And it got to a point that's when Lot decided that we shouldn't strive this way. He said, Lot, choose your own direction. Choose your own land and go. Let me follow whatever you choose. I'm going to go the other way. If Lot was normal, if Lot was truly not, 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 not blocking Abraham's vision, if Lord was actually submissive, Lord would have said, no, you are my uncle. No, whatever, wherever you, you should be the one to choose first. Wherever you choose, I, 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 I'm going to follow. Wherever you lead me to go, I'm going to go that way. You are the one who is my uncle. You are the one that God instructed on this journey. You are the one that, that is carrying me along. Thank you, Pastor Rich. I'm doing the best that I can. You are the one that is carrying me along. The reason why I'm blessed is because of you. So you've got to choose first, uncle. But the Bible says when Abraham said that, Lord was the first to turn around, looked around, and, 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 and saw that looked at so 
Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says Sodom and Gomorrah looked like hell, like, like God's garden. So it was fresh. Lord decided to choose for himself. The land that looked so fresh. Lord decided to choose for himself. The land that looked more fruitful. Lord decided to choose for himself. The land that looked better. You thought that, that, that person was your friend. You thought they were your friend. Every good opportunity you had, you shared with them. Until they had an opportunity that was good for you. And they decided for the opportunity to be wasted rather than tell you about it. And when God told you separate from them, you didn't understand. And the mom in law separated. God says, this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted for him to go so that your eyes can be opened. And God says, now Abraham, now that you are alone, you are ready for this journey. He says, look northward, southward, eastward, and, and, and westward. He says, as far as you can see, you shall possess. He says, now the veil has been taken off. As far as you can see, you shall possess. And we realize that all through Abraham's journey, despite the fact that the favor of God was upon him, there were still instructions that came every now and then. At some point in time, God decided to instruct Abraham to give him a difficult task. He says, take your only son. Finally, at the end of the day, after all the faith has been applied, at the end of the day, Isaac was born. And then God gets up one faithful morning and instructs Abraham to take the son and go offer him as a sacrifice. That was a difficult saying. That was a difficult instruction. I believe Abraham spent a sleepless night. I believe he couldn't even, he couldn't even confide because if I was Sarah, I would never ever accept that. And he, it took me more than 75 years to give birth to this child. No God is going to tell me, yes, he came from God. But I am not, I know what I went through to conceive. I know what I went through in labor pain. So you are not going to come tell me that God told you to kill the child. What, what, what kind of God would give such an instruction? So I believe Abraham did not even tell Sarah. Abraham said, there are some instructions for you to obey. You've got to keep it to yourself. The problem with us is that we have been talking too much. God asked you to, to, to obey. To, God gave you an instruction. And you decided to, 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 to find out with man. You decided to seek the, the, the opinion of man. And they discouraged you. God laid in your heart to sow a seed. And you decided to seek the opinion of man. And they told you, you can't take such a money and give to the church. God gave you an instruction. And your destiny depended on that instruction. And you decided to seek the face of man. And find out what man thinks about it. And at the end of the day, you didn't obey. Abraham knew he had learned from, from, from the work of God with his father. He had learned from the instruction of his father. He had learned from the way his father failed and didn't get to the destination. That if he's going to go to walk on this, on this journey with God, he's going to have to obey every instruction. And if his wife is going to stand as an obstacle, there are some things he has got to do without even seeking the opinion of the wife. Kala Zobarasiana Barushaka. And the Bible says, Abraham sets out. And even Isaac was shocked, was like, Father, I can see the, 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 the firewood. I see the knife, but where is the lamb? God says, Abraham says, the Lord would provide. The Lord would provide. Yes, God gave you an instruction. You are still hoping that this is not true. But while you are there, you are obeying. The problem is that God gives us the instruction and we are sitting and waiting. You are like, God, you told me that my children will be as many as the sun of the sea. Father, you, commit, you commanded me to let go. And you are saying, Father, you commanded me to let go of Ishmael. So how can you now ask me to kill? How can you ask me to sacrifice my only son? Where are the descendants going to come from? Where are the many descendants going to come from? And God is saying, no, you've got to just obey. So when God gives you an instruction, don't even think, think about it. Oh, is it Apostle Paul said, when God told me all these things, I consent not with flesh and blood, not even with your own flesh and blood. When God gives you some instruction, obey before you think about it. Just obey before you even think about it. So yes, I'm still trusting that God is going to provide, but I am still going to go sacrifice. I am not sitting and waiting for God to provide. No, I am on my way to go provide, to, to, to go sacrifice. If God provides, fine. If he doesn't provide, then, 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 then so be it. I will sacrifice the son. After everything, he is the one that gave me. Because sometimes before God gives you more, he's going to lay a demand, to place a demand on the little he has given you. Because what God is giving to you is for the kingdom. The favor of God comes upon you for the kingdom. So God is going to place a demand on that thing that he gave you. God is going to place a demand on that marriage that he gave you. He's going to place a demand on that relationship. He's going to place a demand on that child. He's going to place a demand on your finances. He's going to tell you to sow your first fruit. I gave you the job, but the first salary that you 
take, give it back to me. I gave you a promotion, but the same salary you take, give it back to me. He's going to place a demand because he's trying to test you to see if he can actually pour out the blessing, if he can actually trust you with finances, if he can trust that when he instructs you after he has blessed you abundantly, you are going to obey. And this is Abraham at the end of the day. Abraham goes there, sacrifices the child. As a matter of fact, he sacrificed in his heart because he removed the knife and he was about to kill before God said, don't do that. As of that time, the child had died in his heart. And God was teaching him, saying, you've got to put me first place. Because the moment Isaac came, you became more, more, more preoccupied with Isaac more than me. So God wants to bless you. And sometimes God is going to place a demand on your job. Because he wants you to, be, to put him back first place. Because before the job came, you were talking to God all the time. You were praying to God all the time. You were believing God all the time. Your work with God had a definition. But the moment the job came, you became too busy for God. You didn't even have time to pray. You didn't even have time to study. And sometimes God has got to tell you, say, I'm going to take away this job. I'm going to take away the finances. Before you were blessed financially, you used to live your life according to the precepts of God. But the moment God blessed you, now you spend your weekends on outings. You don't even have time for God anymore. Your breakthrough has become the reason why you are departing from God. God. So sometimes God has got to take away the son. God has got to take away the finances. Sometimes God will take away the job. Not because he hates you, but because he wants you to come back home. Because he wants you to put him back first place. He wants to put you back. He wants you to put him back in that position. Am I preaching to someone? Liza Barasiana Barushaka. Oh, David Alexander, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. And after Abraham, after God told Abraham, said, look behind you. There is something behind you. Elder Fire, am I talking to you? God told Abraham, he says, he says, in blessing, I will bless you. <laughs> he says, in blessings, I will bless you. In blessing, I will bless you. For now, I know that indeed, you are a man that honors me. You are a man that loves me. Monica, you are welcome. God tells Abraham after the obedience to that instruction. He says, in blessing, I will bless you. He says, for now I know that you are a man that loves me. Now I know. God, didn't you know? You are the all-knowing God. Didn't you know? Sometimes God is going to test you before he pours out that blessing. Before he takes you to the next level. Yes, you have been favored. Yes, the, favor, the oil of favor has fallen upon you. But it doesn't automatically guarantee that you get to your destination. The oil of favor has fallen upon you. But it doesn't automatically guarantee that you get to that place. So God will give you an instruction. And we expect you to obey it. When you obey it, God will tell you, now I know. Richard, now I know that I can trust you with wealth. Now I know that I can trust you with revelations. Now I know that I can trust you unless with wealth. Now I know. Now I know. It was a test, but it wasn't meant to kill you. It was meant to take you to the next level. It wasn't meant to kill you. It was meant to validate the call of God over your life. It wasn't meant to kill you. It was meant to align you to the will of God over your life. That test, that, 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 that instruction, yes, it was difficult, but God did not do it out of hatred. It was out of the love of God. It was simply because you have found favor with God. And God began to tell me that the reason why many people get a rubbish, the, the favor of God over their life is because of one thing, disobedience. Whether it's partial disobedience or total disobedience, let's name them. All the people we have been seeing this far, The other day we saw the, the, we saw King Saul, a king that was appointed by God. God had to go through the stress of letting the donkey get missing, not because he was interested in the donkey, but because there was a there was a kingly anointing waiting for Saul, and Saul set, stepped out because of because of the donkey. And guess what? Someone was already waiting for him because the favor of God had located Saul. And, and, and Saul was supposed to be anointed king. But at the end of the day, we see in 1 Samuel chapter 15, we saw that yesterday, that, that, that God instructed Saul to, to go to the Amalekite land and destroy everything, kill everything. Saul obeyed, but Saul obeyed partially. Saul did not 
totally wipe out everything that God has instructed. And the Bible says that day, God stripped the, God took away the throne from Saul. God took away the throne from Saul. That day, the oil of favor left Saul and located David. That day, God said, Saul is no more in my heart. As a matter of fact, when Samuel was even mourning for Saul, God says, how long are you going to mourn for him? Get up, take your, 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 your horn and fill it with oil so fast. Go to the house of Jesse. Because that one has disobeyed me. God says the number one thing that rubbishes the oil of favor over your life, that rubbishes the anointing of God over your life is disobedience. Whether partial disobedience and so wanted to give justifications. Most of the times we have reasons why we disobey God. You have a reason why you did not sow that seed. And you are telling God, Father, you asked me to sow the seed. But I was in a tight corner. I had to pay my bills. Of course, God knew that you had to pay your bills when he gave the instruction. And you are telling God, I had to pay my bills. My rent has expired. I had to pay my rent. And God says, I, I, I don't care about your excuses. To me, obedience is better than sacrifice. And let's still look at another person that, that entered the palace by favor. We realize that only favor can take you into the palace. Only favor takes someone into the palace. Oh, we saw this already. We saw this already with, 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 with David. That it was a favor of God. When Saul mis misbehaved, the favor of God located David and, Dev and, and, and took David from the bush to the palace. But there was another woman that the, by favor she found herself in the palace. This woman was called Vashti. Vashti was the queen in the palace. And at some point in time, the queen decided the queen was celebrating his glory. The queen was throwing a party to celebrate his glory. And somewhere along the line, the Bible says, the Bible says the queen, the, the king had, had, had jubilated, celebrated over 150 days. Oh, cinnamon spice, thank you for joining us. Over 150 days of celebration, just showing for the glory of, of, of the kingdom, just showing for the glory of the kingdom. And when the king was high and intoxicated with wine, the king commanded Vashti to come and come show off her beauty. Let everyone know that the king got married to a beautiful woman. And the name Vashti means beauty. So actually, in other words, when the king commanded Vashti to come and show forth her beauty, the king was asking Vashti to fulfill the purpose for which she was in the, in the palace. Vashti means beautiful. So when the king says, come and show your beauty, the king, in other words, is saying, fulfill the purpose for which you, you, were, you were favored to be in the palace. And the Bible says Vashti denied. Vashti rejected the day. Vashti made a mockery of the king. Vashti disobeyed the king. It doesn't matter the state of the king. But if the king gives you an instruction, you've got to obey. It doesn't matter whether the king is drunk or not. If the king gives you an instruction, you've got to obey. It doesn't matter the state of the king. When purpose is, is, is calling for, you've got to answer. It doesn't matter. Vashti, you are in the palace, but you didn't come to the palace to celebrate and throw a party with the women. That was not your, your, your primary assignment in the palace. While you are in the palace, it's so that you can show for the beauty of the kingdom. And how dare you deny to show for the beauty of the kingdom? How dare you disobey the king? And that was the end of Vashti in the king, in, in the king's palace. That was the end of Vashti as, as a queen. And the Bible says the favor left Vashti and came on one orphan girl. It means that it is not about how you look, but God can choose to favor who he chooses to favor at any point in time. It doesn't matter whether you look like it. It doesn't matter whether your background looks like it. It doesn't matter whether you are prepared for it but when the favor of God comes upon you there is always an instruction that comes forth and you have got to obey the instruction oh if not for God Esther would have missed out because God at some point in time when the Jews were in trouble Esther was already getting comfortable in the palace and Mordecai came up I feel like I'm preaching better than you are responding but it's okay it's okay Oh, I feel like I'm preaching better, better, better than you are responding. Where are the people I'm preaching to? Lisa Barasiana Barushaka. Hollands, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. <laughs> Lisa Bayana Barushaka. Thank you, Pastor Rich. And Esther enters the palace. And at some point, there is trouble. There is trouble and Esther is comfortable in the palace. Esther doesn't even know there is a decree that has been signed against the Jews. 
And, and the Bible says, Mordecai came to Esther, sent a messenger, a servant, to go tell Esther that there is fire on the mountain. How can you be whining and dining in the palace when your people are about to be killed? And Esther says, well, what do you want me to do? I cannot get to the king. If I get to the king, my life will be, will be at stake. Because I can lose my life if the king has not invited me, but I come to him. And Mordecai said, if you like, feel comfortable. But let me tell you one thing. If you don't rise up to stand and fulfill the purpose that you will, he says, if you don't do something to help us, God is still going to raise help from another side. And then he asked something that was very important to me. He says, who knows? Maybe you were called into the, into the palace of such a time like this to bring expansion and deliverance to the people of God. Maybe you were called into the palace of such a time like this to bring expansion and deliverance to the people of God. And, 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 and I believe Esther, remember what happened to Vashti. That when Pepper's called, Vashti was busy whining and dining. And because of that, Vashti, despite the fact that she was favored, she lost her place. And, then, and Esther says, I'm not going to repeat the mistakes of Vashti. I'm going to go in, let everyone take a fast. I'm going to fast for three days and night. I will not eat food and I will not drink water. But I'm going to step out and get to the king after that. If I have to perish, then I perish. But let it be known that I perish in purpose. Let it be known that I obeyed my mentor. Let it be known that I obeyed. I did something to fight for the people of God. Let it be known that I did something to fight for God. I did something to deliver the people of God. I'm going to risk my own life. If I perish, I perish. And that's how Esther was preserved. And that's how Esther brought deliverance to the people. And that's how Esther fulfilled the purpose. And that's how Esther corrected the mistakes of the forefathers. Because she, she, she got up and decided to obey. She got up and she decided to obey. There is another servant of God that was favored. That was so favored that from birth, there was a decree that was supported that, that said they should kill every Israelite child that was born. And they, but somehow by the favor of God on his head, God preserved him. His name was Moses. God preserved Moses because Moses was called to be a deliverer. By favor, Moses was set apart to deliver the Israelites from Egypt. And the Bible says, when it was time, God sent him to go tell the tell Pharaoh to let the people go. And every time, even along the way in the wilderness, God would Moses would cry out to God. And God would tell him, stretch forth your, your staff and let the water part into two. At some point, the people cried out for water. And God says, go and hit the rock. The water is going to come out. At some point, they cried for water again. And the Bible says Moses was angry this time around. He went and instead of, and this time around, the instruction was, you speak to the rock. But Moses went and struck the rock. That was not what God has said. God has said you should you should speak to the rock, not strike the rock. What, did, did water come out? Yes, water came out. But there was partial obedience. There was partial obedience. God sent me here to tell someone. It's not like the oil of favor is not upon you. It's not like the anointing is not upon you. But there is something that rubbishes the anointing of God upon people's lives. There is something that cuts people's destiny prematurely. There is something that takes people out of the will of God. It is called disobedience. It might be partial disobedience. It might be complete disobedience. If God tells you to do it, then you've got to do it. You might not feel like it. But you've got to do it. You might not feel like it, but you've got to do it. You might not even understand, but you've got to do it. And sometimes I came to realize that God is so is, is, is so precise. God loves to give details. So God doesn't just want water to come out. He wants you to speak to the rock. God doesn't just want you to build an ark noir. No, no, no. There are dimensions to the ark. God is interested in the height, in the nature, in the wood that you, you use. God is interested. You've got to use acacia wood and not any other kind of wood. You've got to make it. It should be the, the, the width should be this way. The height should be this way. It should. God has details. He gives you details. And if you can be diligent enough, Liana Barasiana, Lise Bayarasiana, Kiana Balarusha Kaliana Sobrahanda, Iana Balaraswana Barusha Kaliana Rasiana Barushaka, Lise Barasiana Barushaka. Every time you pray for something, God gives you an instruction. I keep saying this, I've said this a number of times. My father taught me every time you ask God for something, He gives you an instruction. And it is your obedience to that instruction that takes you to that destination. 
Liza Branda la Rusha Kaliana la Sobra Handa. Zibayana na 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 na. God told me this morning. He says the favor of God can take you to a place and your disobedience evicts you from that place. Someone that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. God says this, the favor of God can take you to a place and your disobedience evicts you from that place. Liza baraso branda la rushaka. Iana na 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 barasiana balarusha kaliana rasiana. Zibara swana balarusha kaliana rasiana. Someone I want to pray for you today. The oil of God over your life will not be made useless in the name of Jesus. Where God has taken you, you will fulfill the purpose of God over your life. Where God has taken you, you will not be ejected in the name of Jesus. Every instruction that God has given you, the grace to obey falls upon you in the name of Jesus. Every instruction that God has given you, the grace to obey falls upon you in the name of Jesus. What God tells you to do, what God tells you to do, I give the Holy Ghost permission to compel you to do it in the name of Jesus. Liana Barasiana Baru Shaka. Someone you are not dying premature. Someone your destiny will not be cut short. Someone you will become all that God destined for you to become in the name of Jesus. Someone you will become all that, that God destined for you to become in the name of Jesus. Someone you will not be replaced in the name of Jesus. Your position will not be replaced in the name of Jesus. You will not be replaced in the name of Jesus. God will not need to read to bring help from another place. God has already put you in that company. God will not need another manager from that from another place. God will not need another wife when you are already there. God will not need to raise another husband when you are already there. God will not need to raise another person. Where God has planted you, you will not be evicted from that place in the name of Jesus. You will not be evicted from that place in the name of Jesus. Where God says you will be, where God has said you will flourish, nothing will take you out in the name of Jesus. Nothing will cut you short in the name of Jesus. You will live to fulfill all the promises of God over your life. You will live to fulfill all the purposes of God over your life. You will not be taken out of the will of God. My father says destiny is, is like a wave and it is about who jumps into it. It's like a wave. It's like a wave. It's like a train that is moving. It's who is able to jump into it. It means you can either jump into it or jump out of it. Disobedience can make you, can cut you short and you and you step out of that place. Some, some, there, there are people who are very comfortable saying, God showed me this person who is going to be my husband. But there was something that you were supposed to do. Yes, the favor of God came upon you to get married to that man. But then you did not align yourself. The Bible says live a life that is worthy of the call that you have received. So yes, favor gave you the call. Yes, you received the call. Yes, the oil of favor poured upon you. But you've got to align yourself to that life that, that, that you have received. You've got to align yourself to that call that you have received. So yes, God already showed you that you were going to get married to this person. God already showed you that this was going to be your life. This was going to be your ministry. This was going to be your, your, your husband. This was going to be your wife. But you have got to align yourself to, to, to what God showed you. God said you are going to get married to a pastor. You've got to start living like a pastor's wife. Because you've got to live a life that is worthy of the call that you have received. But you did not. You felt. You thought you could live your life the way you were living your life. And end up as a pastor's wife. And God says, no ma'am, I don't think so. You just rubbish the oil of God over your life. You just rubbish the favor of God over your life. So you have got to be replaced. Because you did not align yourself to the promises of God and the will of God over your life. You just stepped out of the moving train. And now you are fooling yourself. Many of us are deceiving ourselves. Still thinking we are on our way to that destination. We don't know we already alighted from the train. And another person already jumped into that train. Someone, disobedience will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Disobedience will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Somebody God told you you were going to be a billionaire for Christ. You were going to be a billionaire. God said he was going to put the wealth of the nations into your hands. But it was supposed to be so that you can sponsor the gospel. So that you can sponsor the gospel. And God gave you a little. And he, and he made a demand for it. And you gave him half. And God says because, of, because you have disobeyed me. You obeyed me partially. I now know that I cannot trust you with wealth. 
because my kingdom will suffer if I give you wealth. I'm looking for people who will give selflessly. I'm looking for people who will give without grumbling. I'm looking for people who understand that this wealth came from God in the first place. So they are just stewards. So in other words, I'm looking for a good steward. And you just failed the test. And right now you are still sitting, fooling yourself and saying, God said I was going to be a billionaire. You don't know because of disobedience, you already jumped out of the uh, out of the train. And you are already going somewhere else. Whereas the train to that is going to that billionaire, to that billionaire destination, another person has stepped into it. Someone you will not miss out on your destiny in the name of Jesus. Kayana Balarasiana, come on. Come on, I'm preaching good. Why am I not seeing the dollar sign? You guys are not nice. <laughs> you guys are not nice. This is week end. I'm trying. Daughter of Zion is trying. You guys are not nice. Come on, daughter of Zion is trying. See the way I'm putting power. <laughs> Pastor Rich, am I not putting power to make this thing? I, 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 I didn't know I could preach today. When I said that, something was telling me, just discuss and leave this place. This is weekend. <laughs> yes, Pastor Rich, you will not miss out on your destiny. You will not miss out on your destiny. You will not miss out on the promises of God over your life. You will not be marking time thinking you are going to a destination when God already replaced you. You will never be replaced. Kayana Balarasiana. Thank you, Pastor. You will never be replaced in the name of Jesus. Someone else is not taking your destiny in the name of Jesus. Someone is not replacing you in the name of Jesus. The oil of favor over your life will not be rubbished in the name of Jesus. Every prophecy, every word, every promise that God has given you, it will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Kayana Balarasiana. Lise Brunda la Rusha Kaliara Sobrahanda. Kabayana Balarusha Kaliara Swana Barushaka. Live the life that is worthy of the call that you have received. Live a life that is worthy. The problem is that when, when, when we find, when favor places you somewhere, you begin to feel like you got there by your own strength. You begin to feel like now that you are there, nothing can take you out from there. You begin to feel like God has chosen you, like you were special. No, 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 no. It was God that gave you the ability to make wealth, to make wealth. And the God that gave you that ability is still alive. The same ability he gave you, he can give another person. If we understood this, we are going to look at God differently. We are going to handle God. If only Saul had known that there is a nobody somewhere in the bush, that God is going to anoint as king. Oh, God, Saul would have obeyed better. If only Saul had known, Saul felt like he was good enough. He, as, a, as a matter of fact, he was a head taller than every other person. And he was the most handsome. So he felt like, I am good for this position. And there is no other person that can take this position from me. And God says, you are good, but, you are, but, but I don't want someone who is good. I want someone who that I will make good. I can make anyone. I didn't put you here because you were handsome. You are the reason why you are king is because I anointed you. It was not your good looks that took you to the palace. It was not your good looks that, that gave you a husband. It was not your good looks that gave you a job. It was not even your skill that gave you the job. It was the favor of God. It was the anointing of God that took you to that place. So if the anointing of God took you to a place, oh, my spiritual father always says, what takes you to a place, you need that thing to stay there. What gave you a miracle, you need that thing to sustain the miracle. Where you were led by something, you need that thing to keep being in that place. So if Saul had known that it was the oil that was poured on his head that made him king, he would have obeyed God better. He wouldn't have done things that were against the will of God. He would have obeyed God better. But he felt like he was good enough to be king. He felt like he deserved to be king. He felt like he was tall and handsome enough to be king. And God says, I don't think so. I'm the one that raises up kings and I'm the one that bring down kings. For this reason, since you don't realize that you are here because of me, I'm going to bring you down and I'm going to raise up another. Because I didn't raise you up. I didn't put you as king so you can do what you think is right. No, I put you as king so you can do what I say is right. So you can fulfill my will, not your will. I know you had a will. But if 
if it was all about your will, I would have allowed you in your father's house to be doing your will. But the reason why I raised you up, why I gave you favor, why I gave you this promotion, was so that you can do my will in this position. Was so that I could use you to establish the kingdom of God on the earth realm. Was so that I could use you for my kingdom, for my purpose, for my will, to fulfill my desires. He says at the end of the day, his counsel stands. His purposes will be fulfilled. So he's looking for someone that at the end of the day, he can say, this indeed was a man after my heart. This indeed was a man after God's heart. So God says, I put you there by favor, but you didn't know it was the favor of God. You thought it was your ability. Let me take away my favor. I take back my oil so that I can prove to you, oh, God bless you. Oh, my God, I'm about to preach my life out. Oh, good cinnamon. Thank you so much. God bless you for your seed. People, this is how you follow a session. Come on, people, you are not learning. <laughs> Forget about everything I said before. Now I was trying rice. This is when the real preaching starts. God bless you for your sin, man. <laughs> I'm about to preach my life out. <laughs> so you feel like the reason why you are in that job, the reason why you got that job was because you are good. It's not because you are good. It's because God gave you the ability to make wealth. It's because God filled your mouth when you went in for that interview. It's because God wanted you in that position. If you understand that, then you will not deny God when he gives you an instruction. You will not disobey God. Sometimes we get comfortable and you feel like now that I am married, let me begin to do some things. And God is saying, no, this marriage was supposed to be a kingdom marriage. You were not in this house so you can do your own will. So you can flaunt yourself like a wife. If only Vashti had known that it wasn't her beauty that took her to the palace, she would have understood that the day she disobeyed the king, she was going to lose to lose that position of queen. If only Vashti had known, but Vashti felt like she was beautiful enough. Vashti felt like she deserved to be queen. Vashti felt like there was no one beautiful enough. And God is saying, you are here in the palace because I favored you. You are here because I brought you into the palace. So if you are in the palace, it's not a time to show off. If you are in the palace, it's a time to walk close to God. The Bible told us yesterday that the reason why Noah was, was, was favored by God was because Noah lived a righteous life and Noah was blameless before God. And the Bible says Noah walked habitually with God. When you understand that you have been favored by God, if you, you, you have no other choice but to walk habitually with God. Because at every point in time, you're asking God, what do you want me to do right now? Lord, what would you want me to do right now? Am I in your perfect will? How am I supposed, God, you bless me in this place. How am I supposed to go about my life? Lord, you position me in this company. What do you expect of me in this company? Oh, you, you thought you were there to make ends meet? No, 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 sir. You were not there to make ends meet. There is a work for you in that company. You are not in that place just to make ends meet. There is a work for you in that family. Why was I born in this family? Someone you got to go back and ask God. Because when the favor of God comes upon you, it's for a purpose. And when you understand that you have been favored, you've got to walk closely with God so that you don't miss out. And tell God, Father, your word, let, let every word that you gave, your words are my command. Your, your command are my, are my actions. Whatever you say, Lord, I say yes. Your command is my yes. All I can do is say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I understand that he took me to that place. So even when the king is drunk and tells me to portray the beauty, I will say it is my privilege that I am in the palace. So if what will please the king right now is for me to show off the beauty, then I'm going to show off the beauty because I am committed to doing what pleases the king. And the king is committed to keep pouring the oil upon my head because this thing is a partnership. So when I please the king, he's going to talk more about me. He's going to love me more and he's going to do more things for me. But when I disobey the king, he gets angry, I lose. Guess what? The king loses nothing. The king loses nothing. Guess what? In this journey with God, when you disobey, you lose. God loses nothing. As a matter of fact, there is someone better somewhere. <laughs> there is always an Esther waiting for you to mess up. There is always a David waiting for you to mess up. Come on, Moses. There is always a Joshua that is the son of none that is a nobody waiting for you to mess up. God always has a ready replacement for you. 
the same oil that poured on that God poured on your head is the same oil that he will pour on another person's head. As a matter of fact, in the case of Moses, God told Moses, it's time for you to go and die. God says, take, take, call Joshua, the son of Nun. Take him to the mountain. Take of the oil that I poured on you, on, on the anointing of the spirit that I put in you. Put it on, on Joshua, the son of Nun. <laughs> oh, when you have to choose your replacement yourself. That was a hard one. God instructed Moses. He says, call Joshua. Take the spirit, take of the spirit that I put upon you and put it upon Joshua. Then go up to the mountain and die. But God, you said I was taking the people to the promised land. What are you talking about? God says, you heard me right. Remove of the spirit that I put upon you. Put it upon Joshua and then go up to the mountain, go and die. Go up to the mountain, go and die. Go up to the mountain, go and die. The plan, the initial plan was not for him to die without entering the promised land. Someone, the grace to obey God, it falls upon you today in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be taken off destiny. Everything that God has shown you before now, you are going to see it come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. The purpose that God had given you, you are going to live to fulfill it in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be cut short. You will live to fulfill every promise, every prophecy of God over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone will, you will not be replaced. You will not be replaced. You will never be replaced in the name of Jesus. You will never be replaced in the name of Jesus. But your obedience will make God take you higher and higher. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Did we receive the word of God with gladness? Did we receive the word of God with gladness? I feel like I did a good job. Amen. Oh, if we receive the word with gladness, then it's time for offerings. If you feel late to sow a seed, you have your offering. This is the right time to cast your offering, to sow your seed. We have one to two minutes for that. Amen, Jones. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen, Nappy Girl TV. Amen. PayPal, Cash App, Mobile Money, Super Chat, Super Stickers, Super Tanks. Come on, people. I've never seen one person use Super Tanks. What's it for? I don't deserve a thank you. <laughs> don't I even deserve a thank you, people? I don't even know if it's working. <laughs> We have one to two minutes for that as we are thanking God. Please, if you have not given the video a thumbs up, do that for me. If you have not liked the video, please like the video, people. Like the video. Oh, amen, 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 Monica, amen. Kayana balara sobranda la rushaka. Zibarara siana balarushaka. Please like the video if you have not done that yet. Please like the video, family. Like the video, like the video, like the video. Thank you so much. One minute, one minute. We just thought on obedience. Come on. Come on. Start being doers of the word of God. It says, it says not partial obedience. Like the video, give an offering. You know, sometimes I realize that the reason why even the widow had a widow's might to give. Sometimes you are not giving, it's not like you truly lacked what to give. It's just that you have not prioritized that. It's just that you have like you are, it's just that you have not prioritized that. You have not set it in your heart. Even the widow had a widow's might to give. Amen, Mary. Amen. God will always be faithful to give seed to the sower. But the thing is, the harvest only comes after you have planted your seed. If you eat your seed, the time for the harvest, you will not have any harvest. And then you look at the people who planted 
they are harvesting and you feel like God is not fair. You ate your seed. It doesn't matter how little it is, but God is faithful to give seed to the sower. Even the widow had the widow's might to give. It's not in the amount. It's in the heart. Hallelujah. God bless you all for your seed. Those that connected through Cash App, through PayPal, through Super Chat, Super Sticker. God bless you for your seed in the mighty name of Jesus. I connect you to your seed and I decree the oil of favor that God is pouring upon you. It will not be lost in the name of Jesus. It will not be wasted in the name of Jesus. It will not be wasted in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Pastor Rich. What leaves your hand doesn't leave your life. Oh, thank you, Pastor Rich, for that word. That's a word for someone, people. That's a word for someone. That's a word for someone. And you know it. Someone, you know it. You are resisting it. You are resisting it. You are going to, get, you, you are going to lose your oil of favor. Be a doer of this word. <laughs> I pray for you. The oil of favor will make impact through you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be replaced. God will not need to replace you. Because it will be recorded. That you were a man after God's heart. That you were a woman after God's heart. You did all that was written for you to do. The Bible writes of David in the book of Acts. It says David after he had fulfilled all the will of the father. Over his life. It will be recorded of you that you fulfilled all the will of the Father after your life, over your life. It will be recorded of you that you fulfilled all the will of the Father, all the will of God over your life. You will not be replaced in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not miss out on your destiny in the name of Jesus. I connect you someone to your seed and I decree you will not miss out on your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be replaced in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you for your giving. God bless you. God bless you. Monica, I pray for you. Whatever your seed of faith is channeled towards, God is bringing it to come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. God is answering you speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. God is answering you speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. Each and every one that connected by seed, whatever your seed is channeled towards, that has desire that you have. God is, is fulfilling your heart's desire in the name of Jesus. God is granting your heart's desire in the name of Jesus. The expectations of the righteous will not be cut off. Whatever you place your faith on by sowing that seed, your expectations will not be cut off in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Blessing is the culture of heaven. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and may he be gracious to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, family, for joining us. If this was your first time, thank you for joining us today. I love you so much. I love you all so, so, so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a lovely weekend. God bless you all. If I'm chance tomorrow, I feel strong. We might have a Sunday service. But if I'm not, Sunday is for rest. <laughs> I might surprise you. I might just come on for us to chat. But God can just place a word for someone. And then you see me. I'm just a servant. I'm learning to be obedient beyond how I feel. If God says there is a word for somebody and you've got to be alive, I will be there. Hallelujah. Oh, family, bye-bye, bye-bye. Have a lovely weekend. Have a lovely weekend. I hope our weekend dates are already in line. I hope we are enjoying the weekend. Remember what we said yesterday? This is a weekend of love. Go enjoy your love in the name of Jesus. Bye-bye, family. God bless you all.